Welcome to an intro to explosions in Blender. Um, it's actually quite simple. So all we need to do is select this cube and we can go to object and quick effect and quick explode, right? And that will add a modifier called explode and a particle system, okay? And both of these combined will explode your object. Beautiful. Now I'm not gonna do this with a cube, so delete that, shift A, mesh and add Suzanne, right? There we go. And we can just shade this smooth if we want or add a subdivision even of one. Beautiful. And then we can choose object, quick effects and quick explode. There we go. Right. So then when you play it, explosion. Beautiful. We even have a vertex group, right? Which means that we can actually set. Um, let's rotate Suzanne a little bit. So we have it pretty much aligned to a floor, right? Then we add a plane now. Shift A, mesh plane. We can make this the ground plane where it sits upon. And then for Suzanne, we can actually add a vertex group, right? Um, so go into edit mode and let's select the bottom part, Alt Z to go into X ray and select the bottom part and select some other random um, geometry as well. All right, there we go. Some parts that may, may not explode. Okay, there we go. And plus and hit assign vertex group beautiful now in our modifier we can set that to be our vertex group group now when we explode it that part actually stays in place beautifully um which is a pretty nice looking explosion right and then we can even add a little collision in the physics properties to our ground plane which means that our let's reset this once again which means that our exploding particles will bounce off Right, beautiful. Now that's quite a lot of bounce to be honest. So perhaps we should just reduce that a little bit. Um, let's do damping a bit higher, a little bit more friction as well, a little bit more stickiness. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, much better. All right, so uh, just copy in these properties if you'd like. And then for our Suzanne, um, we can go to the particles, set this to be. I think 100 is actually fine. And we can add a little bit of normal velocity, like three, and then reduce, uh, refresh. There we go. So now everything explodes outwards a little bit more, right? Beautiful. Now, how do we add an actual smoke and fire simulation to this, right? Because that is also a large part of an explosion. Well, what we do, we select the object and once again, go to object. We go to quick effects and quick smoke. Right now, you may wonder where is the fire? Well, don't worry. But first, we're going to scale this domain to our liking. Now, whenever you scale a domain, whenever you add a fire or smoke or even liquid simulation, you will get an effector and a domain. Right now, your object is going to be your effector. Right? We can see here we got a new fluid physics property and which is set to smoke. Right? This is basically our. Um, our object, right? The effector that's gonna be um, causing the smoke. And then we have a domain, which is basically the volume in which our smoke is gonna be rendering in. Now, once this smoke gets out of the domain, um, it won't render anymore and we'll basically see this box as the wall of the simulation, right? So make sure that that bounding box, right? And that smoke domain is big enough for your simulation. Um, now we have a ground plane. Um, which means that I don't need the bottom part of this uh, this volume at all, right? I want this to stop at the floor, so it basically acts at the collider of a floor. And the top should be fine. Let's move it up a little bit and press A and S and X and just scale that up in all axes as well as the Y a little bit. There we go. So now you can see that instantly we get a lower res simulation as well because our smoke domain if we select that it depends the res resolution of your entire smoke simulation depends on the resolution subdivisions right now you can see right here what one pixel or one part of our simulation is going to look like in terms of size right so that matches for example a square right here right and that's why it looks so blocky but once we add that resolution up that resolution it's going to look much smoother right if i set this to 64 you can see we get smaller blocks. Then what we want to do to set this to fire and smoke is select our effector object and set this from a smoke to fire and smoke. <laughs> yes, it is actually that easy. 
Uh, let's just play this animation uh, and see how it looks. So what you can see is that the smoke and fire simulation comes after the explosion of our object, right? Which means that the separate parts, the, the, the debris, is also going to have that fire and smoke simulation. Which means we get that effect that parts are um, spreading out or exploding from our origin, right? Um, which is quite fun. Okay, so when I just keep playing this, you can see that some of these parts will bounce a little bit back up. And, yeah, start just smoking and catching on fire. Right, so that's quite beautiful. It looks quite nice. We even get that little plum there at the top, which means we need a little bit more height here. So let's crank that up. Make sure that you are in um, Alt-Z X-Ray mode when you move this up. Something like that. Now, the annoying part is... Um, every time you change your domain, by the way, you will need to reset your animation. Um, every time you increase your domain size, it means that also the resolution is going to scale up with it, right? Which means that the larger you make your domain, the more resolution you need to get the same effects, pretty much, right? Um, this actually looks quite nice. So what I'm going to do is change a bit of my uh, domain settings, right? And this is where a lot of your um, fire and smoke settings are going to be. Um, so what we can change is we can add a little bit of, of vorticity to the smoke, right? A little bit of turbulence, randomness, right? We can set this to like point, point 0.1 maybe, I don't know. Um, let's just reset this. And then we can also add a little bit of noise. And that noise is just going to cause a little bit of randomness there, which means that it's going to look more um, high res, right? So to speak. Um, and now we can also just change the settings, but usually I just keep that the same. For the fire, we have some settings as well. We can set the reaction speed a bit lower, 0.5 perhaps, which basically means that we're going to have more fire, okay? And then we can just play this once again and see how it looks with a little bit of that um, noise and stuff like that. And it looks a lot better, right? Amazing. And then once we play this further, the smoke is going to rise and form that nice little explosion shape that we are all familiar with beautiful 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 okay so you get the idea of how this works right so what we have to do before we tweak anything else is have a look at the actual material right because this material is just a viewport material and it does not resemble really the render material we have to set that up right so once we set this to cycles GPU, and we go to render view, you can see that all we have so is some thick smoke. So move your window to the left, go to shader editor, hit home to find your setup, and we have a principled volume. Beautiful, exactly what we need, because we work with a volume. So the smoke material, the fire and smoke material, will be applied to your entire volume, right? Which means that if you make more fire and smoke simulations inside the same domain, they will all have that material as well. So how do we tweak this? Well, we have a volume info node. So shift A, volume info. There we go. And we can connect the density to the density of the smoke, first of all. Right, that's going to just show um, also some of the dissolving effects of the smoke. So um, it's going to dissipate. And we can also use the flame to control the emission strength, right? There we go. But also to control the emission color. Shift A, find a color ramp for in between the flame and the emission color. And now we can actually tweak the colors of our flames. Beautiful. So you can see that when we crank this more to the right, we can also remove part of the flame, move this to the left. We add a little bit of, of that, that effect there as well. Um, so in between here, um, and I usually go with another black at the far right, which means that we can control the fall off of the flame, for example, more in the center as well. You can see it perfectly right here. What happens is we add a little bit of that, that thick smoke look back into our fire as well. Right, maybe not too much, but a little bit. Then we can actually control the color. So let's start with a darker orange like that. Hit the plus. We can set this to be more of a lighter orange. There we go. Then we can add, for example, a yellow to be right there. Right. And perhaps control this a bit more to the right as well. And then I want another one that is going to be more whiteish. Right. Light. And maybe a bit yellow. There we go. 
right? So for example, this could be your fire look. And you can play around with this all you want. There's a lot of um, cool setups as well that will make this look a little bit different. You can just look for it on Google. But this is the, the very main kind of setup. And now we can hit Shift A and find a math node set to multiply. Um, and there we go to control the strength of this emission of the fire. And we can duplicate that for the density of the smoke, right? So we can control the density of our smoke and the strength of our flame, um, which is just perfect, right? So let's make this look a bit more nice. There we go. And I will now just play around with our flame and stuff, right? So the fun thing is, something that I haven't told you yet, is that when we scroll down in our domain settings, we actually come up at a field weights tab. And whenever you have this, you know that you can use, well, effectors. And that's a nice moment to end part one. I hope you enjoyed this setup, right? The initial setup of the explosion. And the next one will be tweaking some settings, playing around with it, playing around more with the material as well. And then we'll also be setting up the render, right? So... Um, if you like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I'll enjoy any one of those. And then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.